Hey guys, welcome to today's episode and we have a real treat for you. Today we are talking about how we can teach kids to cook so your family can thrive with healthy food. And so many kids are just eating takeout and doing things that are just crazy, crazy, crazy. So today we are really excited because we're talking about how kids can do real food. And we have Katie Kimball with us today and her website um, is kidscookrealfood.com. So Katie, welcome. Tell listeners a little bit about yourself. Well, thanks so much, Chantel. Um, You know, I'm a mom of four and so life is busy. Life is crazy. And I, you know, was raised pretty normally on standard American diet. And it wasn't until I was pregnant with my first that I really started caring about every little bite that was going to go into his mouth. I think that's a lot of mom's stories. Um, And I ended up uh, learning a lot in the kitchen. I'm a a teacher by trade. That's what I did before I had kids. Um, And so my brain was always teaching in my head, like, how would I help other moms, like avoid the mistakes I'm making in the kitchen and spend less time. And so um, I launched a website in 2009 to help families stay healthy without going crazy, balancing time, budget, nutrition, and environment. And um, I loved like building the community online and talking to people all around the world. And I started realizing I kept hearing the same story. People would say, you know, Katie, I really want to get healthy, but this is so hard because I was never even taught to cook at all right? Like our generation was kind of missed. And so I started thinking about that. I thought, gosh, you know what that means is that we're not comfortable in the kitchen in general, our generation, and we're not teaching our kids 20 years from now, those kids are going to be going like, oh, I wish I could get healthy, but I was never taught to cook. Right. So I just thought somebody needs to step into that gap and make it easier for moms to get their kids in the kitchen, to get them involved in their own diet and nutrition from the start. And as a mom of four with a teaching background, um, figuring out how to cook, I thought this is, this is my mission. This is what I'm going to do. So let's start with kind of uh, the five-year-olds. So like, let's say someone's has a five-year-old and then we'll talk about 10-year-olds and 15-year-olds, but let's say you have five-year-olds, like what are you teaching them at age five to do? Like, let's get real practical. Like what would be like a five-year-old's, your number one recipe that you would teach them to cook. I love that you're jumping right into the practical because that's totally what I'm known for. Like we got to give moms things they can use right away. Um, So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to expand your five-year-old down to age two, and we're going to talk about all our preschool kids who can't read yet. Um, And then I'm going to challenge the fact that you just asked me for the best recipe because I don't think cooking is all about recipes. I think it's really about building the skills that we need to make any recipe, right? Then it, then you can fit any food preference, any dietary sensitivity, you know, or the choices you're making. So for me, it's all about building skills. And so for those little ones, they, they want to help. They're so intrinsically motivated and you are super lucky moms out there. If you've got a child five and under, cause you know, they're asking, right? Can I vacuum? Can I dust? They like, they don't even realize these are chores <laughs> at that point. So, so capture that motivation and say, yes. I mean, that's the first step is we have to get over our fear of the mess, our fear of them slowing us down and say, yes. Um, the first, the two first things that I love to teach those little kids are butter knives and bananas, just because they're so simple um, and they feel like hot stuff because they're using a knife and you can make it. I mean, I, I say, take it really seriously. Treat that butter knife like it's a sharp knife. Teach the child to keep their hand. We call it, hey, hey, out of the way at Kids Cook Real Food and just make things really fun. Um, but then they're empowered to now cut up a banana for their own snack, right? That's amazing for a three-year-old. The other thing I like to teach those little kids because they can't read yet, they don't know numbers and fractions. So like measuring spoons are tricky, right? And they're, you know, we, we don't know how to involve them very well. We usually measure and we let them dump, but we can totally empower them to measure with a really simple trick, renaming your measuring spoons, um, dad, mom, kid, baby. Mm-hmm. And I know that's not everyone's family structure, but kids get it from storybooks and stuff. So the tablespoons, the dad, the teaspoons, the mom takes like 30 seconds to teach. And now you can have your preschooler. If they say, Oh mama, can I help? And it's five 37. And you're like, no, I need to get dinner on the table by six. Like this is not happening right now. Now you can say yes, because you can mm. send them to the table with the four spoons. You tell them to set them up in order, which is a great preschool skill. And dad, mom, kid, baby. Now, and then you give them a, you know, your jar of salt or your basil or whatever you need for what you're making and say, I need a mommy spoon of salt 
You put it in that little spill bowl that I gave you, right? I need a baby spoon of cayenne pepper, whatever it is. They can measure that out. They can take five minutes to do it. It's excruciating if you're with them, but it's fine if you're still working on your, on your dinner, right? Because they're not slowing you down. And then at the table, you get to say, guess who made this meal taste so good? right? And now self-esteem is boosted. They, they love being in the kitchen and you've got a helper who will, who will really last through the years because you've given them a positive experience before age five. And I know that on your website, you've got some really cool things where you've got kid-friendly kitchen tools mm -hmm. where you can say, hey, you can buy these different things. And then it just makes it a little bit more kid-friendly for them to be able to use the knife and so forth. Talk about that. Oh, our little kids love the crinkle cutter. Um, in fact, we were just having a conversation a few weeks ago in our members Facebook group. Do you know what a crinkle cutter is? Yeah, I do. Yeah, okay. So it makes the food look so cool, like cucumbers or cheese cubes or whatever. Very easy for little hands or medium-sized hands, you know, all age kids to use. Um, but the moms were saying, yeah, I'll like cut cheese with this thing for, you know, a potluck. And people are like, oh, you shouldn't have like taken so much time to make this look so cute. And they're like, I didn't like, it's just a crinkle cutter. So that kind of thing is really, really fun. Um, we do a big review of knives because, you know, for me, it's real food. We, real food is fruits and vegetables. And if you can't cut those, you can't unlock the produce section. Mm -hmm. so we teach kids to use real knives starting at about age six or seven. We even have four and five-year-olds using paring knives um, in our classes, the, the brave mamas who are, who are open to that. Um, so I don't, I don't do a lot of kid versions, right? I don't love the kid knives because they force a different way of cutting those like plastic ones with the jaggedy edges. Um, because it's a serrated edge, you have to do more of a saw blade motion, which is not the motion that you'll make when you graduate to a real knife. So I, I advocate for real knives as much as possible. So we just um, talk about shorter ones. Mm. So like a five inch chef's knife instead of an eight inch chef's knife. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does make sense. So as far as like, what's kind of, let's say we've now got someone who's 10 years old. So they're a little bit older. They can do more. What are some tips for them that you can share that gets them excited about cooking? Yeah. Raise the bar. Right. I mean, I think we forget that our kids are so much more capable than we think. So by age, by age 10, honestly, by age nine and 12, my two older kids were doing a whole meal a week mm -hmm. by themselves. I would leave the home and go volunteer at church. And, you know, so nine and 12, that's right around that 10. So for sure, even well before 10, I, I encourage parents to get those kids to the stove, you know, teach, you're, we're teaching basic skills, right? Flipping is a good example. Flipping sounds like a ridiculously easy skill, but when you think about yourself flipping um, a fried egg or flipping pancakes, things can go wrong sometimes, right? So, you know, if you can teach stovetop safety and that skill of flipping, for example, now there's a, a vast amount of recipes that those kids can be involved in. Flipping hamburgers, salmon burgers, you know, pancakes, crepes, all of these things that we make in a fry pan or on a griddle. Um, so that's where I go is I, I like to talk about those basic foundational skills. I think for kids to be um, confident in the kitchen. They need to know how to use the stovetop safely. They need to know how to measure and stir really well. They need to know how to read and follow a recipe, right? That's a skill. It's different than a chapter book when you're reading a recipe. So that's something that, you know, the first few times your kids are in the kitchen, you really work on what does this mean? What are these ingredients? Where are they? What do these fractions mean? You know, all of that sort of recipe literacy. Um, and then they need to have those knife skills. That's incredibly empowering. So for those 10 year old kids, we're just, we're going to teach those basic foundational skills and then let them, let them have some, you know, let the apron strings out, let them have some independence there. Because when kids build confidence in the kitchen, it is amazing to see how that confidence spills out into the rest of their life. They become more confident human beings because they're doing this real authentic task. They're nourishing people. They're doing tasks that adults do. And they know it. And that is so much more worth than a participation medal, than a good job, than sticking their artwork to the fridge, you know, like that is real deal, authentic self-esteem. That's awesome. And, I, you know, it's really making me think because a lot of times my son will be like, mom, my son loves pasta. He plays a lot of uh, basketball. And so we 
buy like organic pasta and, but he likes it fresh. So like if you made it, he won't eat it. Like if you made it earlier in the day, like he wants it literally like right off the, you know, out of the stove. And I was thinking, cause like, okay, he's nine years old. He's going to be 10. There's no reason why. And I'm always the one making that pasta for him. Like there's no reason why he shouldn't be doing that. So that's really good. I'm really glad this is really challenging me. But let's just say you have like a 10 year old. What would be the whole scope of things? Like, let's talk about how advanced. Cause it's like, I think moms just get like me, like a mom, can you do this? Sure. Mom, can you do this? What would you expect once someone has gone through your training, like they've gone through the advanced course of your training, what should a 10 year old be able to cook? You know, almost anything that they can search on Pinterest, really. I mean, we're not doing like flamethrowers and creme brulee, right? But like average recipes that use average ingredients that most families have. Um, again, I, so my kids right now are six, nine, 12, and 15. I love that they allow me to count by three, like just stay there guys. So I can't, don't forget your ages. Um, and the, the nine, 12 and 15 year old, all of them can use a chef's knife. All of them can cut peppers and onions. And like, if I said, we are going to make a stir fry tonight, like they could cut all those things. They know how to use the stove. Um, you know, so there's, we, I think about those foundational building blocks, right? So stovetop safety, we know how to boil things like pasta or potatoes. We know how to flip things. We know how to saute. We know how to steam and what it looks like when steamed vegetables are done, right? So those are like sort of a, a body of skills. Um, and then we talk about the oven. Once kids are eight or nine or so, it's when, when kids are strong enough and brave enough to use the oven, they should totally be trained in doing it. I, it just, oh, it just irks me when I see like kids cookbooks and stuff. They always have so much that the adult has to do. Mm-hmm. Kids ask your adult to put it in the oven, ask your adult to cut this. And I'm like, no, no adults ask your kids to do that. Like we have got to flip these scripts mm-hmm. and really challenge the thinking of what our kids are capable of. So can a 10 year old make homemade pizza from scratch, yeast bread, top it, put it in the oven, get it out, cut it up. Yep. Can they cut onions and peppers to put on top? Absolutely. Um, so that there's not a whole lot really that, that my 12 and 15 year old can't make. You know, it's funny. Cause I had a girl that was, her, their family came over to the house and the girl was 20 years old and as she, they were like, what can we help with? And we were making scrambled eggs. And the 20 year old was like, she's like, I've never cracked an egg before. And I was like, oh my goodness. And so I literally, she was 20 years old and I'm teaching her how to crack an egg. And mm-hmm. she was getting like, you know, shells all in it. And then, you know, my nine year old was like, here, I'll show you. And he was, you know, doing it. Cause I have him do that all the time. I love that. So but I, one of the things I love on your site is that you say that if you want kids to really help in the kitchen, they really need to know how to use knives. And you actually have a free 10 minute video that teaches kids how to use knives, which is amazing. Talk about that. Yeah. So one of my philosophies, again, is to raise the bar to and to start young. So we actually teach the same three ways to hold the knife and four ways to hold the food with that butter knife and banana at age two, as we do with the chef's knives. And parents love this because it's sort of a seamless transition. You know, if your two-year-old, your three-year-old, your four-year-old has been using a butter knife on soft foods, right? I mean, think about cooked carrots, cooked potatoes. There's actually a lot of things you can cut with a butter knife. And they know these seven phrases like, hey, hey, out of the way and up and over soldier, just, you know, and they respect that butter knife like it's sharp. You can, you can look at your, you know, five-year-old and go, huh, Maybe he can use a sharp paring knife. Am I crazy? What will my friends think? Is this too dangerous? And then you go, no, it's it's not because they've been trained for years treating a knife the same way. So that's that's totally my philosophy is this nice, beautiful, seamless transition. Um, we We teach emphatically too that the right size of knife for the child's skill level and size of their hand, as well as the right food is the equation for success. Okay, so we don't use paring knives on onions. 
that's a disaster waiting to happen. We don't need to use chef's knives on a little bitty apple. So it's all about pairing, you know, the right knife with the right food. Um, and actually in our house, I mean, we've had a good five years of kids using knives. And for quite a few years, we had, I, I, would, I, would, ugh, I would always say, no accidents. Well, now we've had a couple and they've both been because my child chose the wrong knife for the wrong food. You know, a cheap little dollar store paring knife for a big fat one pound apple. My son Paul came into the office. He said, mom, I caught myself with a knife. Like he's shocked. <laughs> it didn't hurt in a little poke. And I'm like, well, you know, you're fine. Let's wash you up, get some sand. I said, what happened? And he showed me the knife and the apple. I said, well, Paul, <laughs> this knife is not gonna, it's not even as long as the apple. Mm -hmm. So there's a, you know, there's, there's sort of an, an academia about it. There's an intelligence to using knives, the right knife, the right food and the right technique. And when you have that down, it's completely safe. It's as safe as getting into a car and putting your seatbelt on. Hey guys, I want to talk to you about something that can lead to chronic disease. Yes, it's sugar. Over 70% of Americans are eating more sugar than they need to, and I was one of them. And I kept saying, you know, this is my last time. I'm going to cut back. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. And I didn't. I saw all the negative health effects. It was weakening my immune system, and I just couldn't say no. And that's until I discovered some really practical steps to just eliminating sugar from my life for good, and I wanna teach you that as well. So everything I've learned to break my sugar addiction in my 30-day Kick Sugar Challenge. You're gonna get exclusive access to a private Facebook group. You're gonna have four weekly calls. You're gonna get an accountability partner. I'm gonna be personally walking you through these next 30 days. The most important thing you're gonna learn though in these 30 days is the mindset you need to kick the sugar, to take your intermittent fasting to the next level. So just go to chantelrayway.com slash kick sugar to learn more. The best part is it's only $30 right now. That's a dollar a day investing in you for 30 days. It officially doesn't start until January 4th, but if you join now, you're gonna get pre-access to the group and we're gonna give you practical tips to not overindulge through the holidays. On December 15th, the price is gonna go up. So click the link in the description and you'll get to go to chantelrayway.com slash kick sugar and you can join the group for just $30. So as far as the videos that you have, so I know you have a lot of videos. So kind of what would what would a parent do? Like maybe like when they come home from school, like we'd be like, okay, we're going to spend 30 minutes a day on learning a new skill. And then after they watch that video, then they would get excited and, you know, help make dinner, maybe something like that. Yeah, exactly. And I love that you said right after school, because that is actually my advice for parents. You know, kids always ask to help right before dinner, but that's when we're stressed out and emotions are high and we're rushing and it's going to be a bad experience for everyone. You know, if you're trying to teach a child something new right before dinner. So right after school is a great time to work with the kids. Um, the videos are super motivating because they have kids in the videos that are, you know, similar ages and different genders and stuff. And so the kids start to feel ownership of these tasks. Um, one of the things that our members love to do is say, oh, like I need, I need some help with dinner tonight. I have a job for someone with peeling skills. Who, who has peeling skills, you know? And then the child who's taken that class is like, oh, me, me, that's my skill, right? Totally motivating. Um, so as far as how, how it looks logistically, absolutely. You'd watch, watch the video. So I do the hard part. You don't have to know how to cook. You don't have to know how to explain it or how to demonstrate that's in the video. And then you just kind of get out the food and, and do the practice. Um, and what's, you know, you end up with lunch or snack or dinner or breakfast, a little piece of it already made um, instead of, you know, a craft that you don't know what to do with and glitter all over the house <laughs> if they if you do like crafts for quality time. Uh, so I think it's great. I think it's great to teach kids away from the meal and just prepare food for later. And absolutely, you mentioned then they're able to help with dinner. I mean, that's the ROI, right? You put in a little half hour here, half hour there, <laughs> and you can save 10 minutes, 20 minutes on every meal when your kids are helping chop those vegetables. So you have your own cookbook. I saw online kids cook real food that you wrote. Tell us like, what's like the top three recipes that are in there that you would say like, you know, maybe your nine-year-old or your 12-year-old's like out of any recipe in here, this is their favorite. 
Yeah, that book goes right with our classes. It's all the recipes that we show in the videos. Um, but I want to emphasize again that we're not about the recipe. I mean, we have to make something, right? We have to make food. Right. But we're it's super flexible where we're focused on the skill. So kids with food allergies or different preferences or, you know, people abroad sometimes can't find an ingredient. You can just swap it out for any other recipe that teaches that skill. Um, but we do have a few favorites of members. Um in our, our first class for our intermediate level, our kids who are like early elementary, we teach how to make a couple different homemade salad dressings. I mean, they're just simple. It's ranch and Italian, but what more, you know, basic kid-friendly stuff can you get? And you're making it yourself. So you're removing those industrial oils. You're removing the MSG that's in commercial ranch. And we have so many families say, I can't believe how good this is. Like this is 100% going to be a new staple in our family. And when the kids can make it, that makes the making something a staple a little bit more possible. You know what I mean? Because we don't mm -hmm. always have time to do everything homemade. But when you can assign it to a child after school, that's super doable. Um, and another big favorite is our pumpkin muffins. They're gluten-free, dairy-free, egg-free, corn-free, like they're everything free. <laughs> so, and they're, I swear, it's the most flexible recipe in the world. I've never been able to mess it up. And so kids, it, that's so nice for kids that it always turns out they're always moist and they're so good. And kids who don't like pumpkin, you know, or who don't like sweet potatoes, who don't like those vegetables, the parents are always overjoyed that they're getting some vegetables in the muffins. Hey guys, I wanted to tell you I'm offering a free weight loss virtual Bible study. Now is the perfect time to focus on understanding true hunger and fullness and learn what the Bible has to say about it. All you have to do is go to ChantelRayWay.com slash Bible study. After you sign up, you'll receive a six week Bible study video that you can watch on your own or you can get a small group of people and do it together. That's ChantelRayWay.com slash Bible study for your free six week Bible study course. I love it. I love it. Well, as far as some of the things that you have on your site, I love that you kind of tell people, look, here's kind of the best knives that you can use that are kid friendly. What's your favorite product that you have on your site that you say out of anything, if you need one thing, this is what you'd want for kids cooking. Um, it's, it's a good knife. And I'm a big fan of the Victorinox brand. They're actually rated number two at America's Test Kitchen, which is pretty awesome. Wisthoff is number one, but Wisthoff's very, very pricey. Um, and Victorinox is incredibly affordable. They have a four inch utility knife that is powerful enough to kind of act as a chef's knife, but perfect for tiny hands. And they have a five inch chef's knife, which is really rare. It's nice and short. And again, I mean, you can do onions and peppers and everything with this five inch knife and it's only 20 bucks. So kids awesome. love having, you know, you can never have too many, too many knives in a kitchen full of cooks who are cooking. Um, so that's, that's part of what we say. We start the kids meal revolution. Again, flipping that script. It's not about making se separate meals for kids. It's not about the disaster of a kid's menu, you know, and the terrible bland food that's always the same in every restaurant, even the Mexican and Asian restaurants have like the chicken strips and pizza, you know? Um, so I just constantly challenge parents, like kids can eat real food and you're going to be a lot more likely to get them to eat genuine real food when they're involved. Mm. I also saw on there that you had a lettuce knife that you said that when you cut with this lettuce knife, it allows the, the, lettuce to last almost a week. Tell us about that. I think, yeah, I think this is um, sort of biology of cells. When you're cutting with a really sharp knife, um, you, you actually open the cells in the lettuce and that's what makes the edges of your lettuce go brown really quickly. So when you use a plastic serrated knife, it more tears the lettuce. So you could do the same thing by just having a child tear up the lettuce, which is a great job for little ones who like to be tactile, you know, and they just want to be involved. Give them some lettuce or some kale and have them tear that up. Um, but the knife is just quicker, you know, for kids who can handle it. And, uh, and because it's tearing, not cutting, the lettuce lasts longer. Awesome. Well, this has been amazing. Tell listeners where they can find you and where they can follow you. Yeah, we're at kidscookrealfood.com on Facebook and Instagram, also at Kids Cook Real Food. And just definitely, we invite you to, to jump in. And um, I, can, I can send you a link for the show notes, too, for that 10-minute knife skills and safety class, because I love giving that one away for free, because I think it's so empowering for kids and families to have those skills. 
That's awesome. Well, you guys stay tuned. You've definitely motivated me tonight when I get home. My son is going to be in the kitchen helping me cook for sure, because I totally agree. It's a skill that everyone needs to learn how to do more and more and more. And if you know how to do it, then you want to do it more. If you're not that good at it, then you'll be like, forget it. I don't want to do it. So yeah. um, thank you so much for being with us. Yeah. Awesome. And if you have a question that you want answered, go to questions at ChantelRayway.com. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye for now. This has been a Sempronto Media Production. 